Okay, so we have version 2.1 in the Affinity range. Quite exciting. Um, if you go to their website, you'll see they've got a whole list of modifications. Most are actually for the iPad. And then there's a few like tweaks, you know, you, instead of doing a left click twice, you can do a right click and then get quickly and the, those kind of tweaks. What excites me is just one feature um, that has been missing inside Affinity Designer. And it's possible to go into Affinity Photo, um, do a live filter there, and then open that file inside Affinity uh, Designer and have that feature accessible. And I was thinking, why don't they just include it here? And they've done that. So for those of you who have the previous versions, you know that with Affinity uh, designer persona we had these things added perspective quads and I thought this was what they were bringing in back back then to actually do the perspective stuff but these work extremely differently it's almost like a fancy cropping tool it's it's difficult to get your mind around it and I'm sure somebody's done a great tutorial to explain all of these features but what I'm going to share with you now is under the pixel persona and it makes sense to put it under pixel persona because if they put it with this here you're going to have two perspectives and you're not going to know which is which and this perspective that i'm talking about now is brand new to 2.1 it works like the one in photo it does true perspective movement of a pixel layer of an image okay so where do we get it under pixel persona here again i just wish that they had put a little hourglass here like they have in photo so that we know that's a live filter but maybe they do that in the next releases so it's hidden somewhere here in the layers there we see it it's under live filters and there we've got perspective and uh, mesh warp although these two exist in the affinity persona it's not the same this is true pixel editing level okay it's not working with your uh, with your vector stuff like the other one is. Okay, so let's get onto it and see if I go and I place, I'm gonna take this object and I'm gonna go from this corner to that corner, you know, diagonally like that with the size of the image. Let's see, we just get it there. And that approximately will be fitting onto this, this book itself. So if I have that there, I wanna now put on the new live filter, perspective great stuff there we've got the handles and you've got a few things here similar to affinity photo so we can just move it down there um, I'm going to move it a little bit over the book and I'll explain why I mean just get it there to the edge and a little bit over let's see where we are and just a little bit over the book the reason is, is because this book itself, if you look at this edge, it's got a curve on here and I can't, I'll have to change this to a mesh to kind of distort it up there and I could do that. But what I do is just take it and just have it bleed a little bit over the shape of the book. Because what I'll do is I'll go back into this persona, I will create a accurate outline and then I'll use this insert and I'll insert the object in, then it will blend much better. I'll show that to you. So, um, yeah, we'll, we've got that sorted. So I'll just click off there. And there we've got it. The perspective is perfect in there. It's just that the book is bleeding over the actual area. So now I can move back here. And I'm going to just hide this layer. And then go and create a... A curves layer here yeah. so maybe from there to there okay so this this would give me a little bit more control and then I'll press A to create the node tool and there we go I think we've got that alignment uh, let's see where we yeah, this should be pretty fine yeah Okay, now now this is if your actual cover like that white background is going to fit exactly and you don't want the edge to show out. So yeah, I'd go and I'm going to remove the 
the dark uh, black border eventually. But now I'm going to now go to this layer and I'm going to go control X. So I'm cutting it out and then on this curves layer I'm going to click insert in the selection and I'm going to go control V and paste it. So it is now pasted. I have shaped it here although this outline is where the original was. You can see if you go here now it's fitting inside that shape. If I have to take this curve here now and bend it up here, you can see what happens if I pull it down. You can see the book underneath. I'm going to go control Z. So it's inside the curve here now. I am going to switch the boundary border off so that it doesn't interfere there. So there we have it nice and pretty in there. That's if you were going to use this, this white background, the actual background. However, there's, there's an easier way. If, if it is a perfectly white background, you can keep the image and you don't have to go have it cut out. If you're happy with the actual book cover color, you can turn this white into a transparent just using a, a blend mode. And I'll show you that now. In that case, you wouldn't have needed to, to get these edges exactly to the, to the edge of it because this white would actually become transparent. So let me show you what we do is we'll go in into this area and I will go and choose a blend mode of multiply. Okay, and there you can see we've got the object in there and it's now just a multiply blend mode. If you, if you want this object to be popping out more and don't have it maybe because the multiply maybe makes it a little bit dull, you, you can then go cut it out and just bring it in here and keep the perspective. So that's how it works there. I think it's brilliant. We've got now perspective tool and the mesh warp tool. Okay, so that's how it is. I think now we're excited about using this. We can create our mockups quite comfortably and use our mockups for that purpose. So be blessed and have a fantastic day and shalom to everybody.